Hey guys, Cobb here. Um, this is going to be the abridged version of my pedal tones in chord progressions lessons due to the fact that it was 15 minutes and YouTube doesn't like that, so let's get right into it. I'm going to start off by just playing the progression straight through for you guys, let everybody hear it, and then I'm going to talk about what the pedal tones do. serve two particular purposes. Um, one is to add the flavor of not just going straight up, say, in bar chord form. Um, but the other and more important purpose is a functionality thing. Um, these pedal tones allow you to name the chords differently, and the ability to name them differently lets you use different scales over them. Um, I'll explain that a little more in depth, but let's just keep going right now. First chord is an E major, nothing special. Um, the triad is E, G sharp, B. This is the first um, chord in the progression. It is the root. It is the key we are in. Um, the next chord contains the notes F sharp, C sharp, or excuse me, C sharp, F sharp, A, D, B, E. Um, so the best way to name this chord would be as an F sharp chord. Um, F sharp, A, C sharp being the triad, E is the seventh, and B is the ninth, so you have an F sharp minor nine. Um, another way to name this chord would be to start with the, e, a, the A and use A, C sharp, E as your triad for an A major chord, and then you also have the F sharp and the B on top to have an added ninth and eleventh. Um, a third way, and the way I like to use this chord and the upward version part of the progression is to start it on the C sharp and you have C sharp E for a C sharp minor and then you'll have an F sharp, um, a B and an A. Um, with the B you have a C sharp minor 7 and then the F sharp and A are an added 11 and 13. Um, the reason I like to do this is because the A major, if you name this as an A major, you have a major 4. If you name it as an F sharp minor, you have a minor 2. And if you have it as a C sharp minor, you have a minor six. Of these three um, progressions and Roman numerals, the minor six allows you the most flexibility in moving to another chord. The minor two sort of limits you to going to a five. The four can go to a five. It can also go to a two, some other chords. But the six can go almost anywhere the one can go. Um, so it's about the most versatile of the three. Uh, however, all three names are appropriate and acceptable. So whatever chord you feel um, is fine. I like to, as I said, I use as a C sharp minor going up and then an A major going down. And the reason I do that is because going up, you can use the C sharp minor scale and then going into the next chord. Um, and then when you come back down, you use the A major. You get to use A major scale or A Lydian. So um, if I were to start... <laughs> On, over this chord, but then coming back down, I could have a something like that. Um, and coming down into the four allows me to do a plagal cadence going four to one, the E major. Um, the next chord contains the notes D sharp, G sharp, B, another B, and E. Um, this really can only be named one way, in my opinion. That is the G-sharp, B, D, G-sharp minor with the E as an added sixth. Um, you could name it as a B chord using B and D-sharp as the triad, um, and then stacking the G-sharp on top and the E, but that's not necessarily as effective. I think most people hear it as a G-sharp minor, so that's the car, uh, chord I would use. Um, so those are the chords of the body of the song. Moving on to the bridge you have the chords, um, the first chord contains the notes F sharp, B, D sharp, B, and E. These are 
octave B is not important, but worth noting. Um, the best way to line up this chord would be B, D sharp, F sharp, E, B major triad with the E on top as an added 11th. Um, you could also call it a D minor chord. Um, the B major is a 5, which makes sense coming from the 1, moving into a 5 for the bridge, the key of 5, but that's not really what we're doing with this progression, so I like to call it uh, D sharp minor, even though it's a little bit more of a stretch, you have the D sharp and the F sharp, um, and with the B and E on top, you have the minor 6th and the added ninth. Um, but this makes it a minor 2, which means I'm able to use the D sharp Dorian on that scale, or on that uh, chord, as well as a couple of other possibilities. Um, but I like that over the added 5 because of the next chord. The next chord is E, A, C sharp, B, E. Um, now with these notes, you have the the logical sequence would be A, C sharp, E, uh, with the B on top as an added 9. So you have another A major, um, which is the major 4 as we discussed earlier. Um, you could also name it as an E add... Uh, E at 11 and 13 with uh, with no 7th, but there's also no 3rd for the E chord, so I don't like to do that. E would stack it as E, B, A, C sharp. Um, the other possibility, the way I might do it, would be to stack it as B, C sharp, E, A. And even though I'm missing the 3rd and the 5th for the B, this allows me to take the A as a dominant 7th in the key of B, and I can do something with the Mixolydian skip. Um, and in doing so, the bridge then becomes a 5, but then a 2, 5, and then these uh, the chords that trail back into the 1. But what you have overarching is a 2, 5, 1, um, which is a very common and very useful progression for all sorts of styles. Um, so that is the super abridged version of this lesson. Um, the the purpose for me with pedal tones, as I've said, guitar to me is an instrument about versatility, and there's nothing better that you can do than allow yourself the most versatile um, uh, sound available to you. Um, with each chord being named several different ways, you can accentuate the name of the chord through the, uh, the solo, the melody, what have you, uh, the writing that goes on top of it. Um, in addition to that, if I were to play this chord, it's very stale, it's very boring, the interval structure is all the same, it's just bar chords. It's not nearly as exciting as keeping the pedal tones accents the uh, the notes that are shifting in the melody in the uh, uh, the harmonic structure a little bit but then it also um, as I said it's more versatile it gives you a, a brighter uh, a more open sound I think than just moving up one shape and doing the same thing over it feels more thought out it is more thought out um, and writing on top of it it leaves you so many more possibilities um, so once again, this is the super abridged version of the pedal tone lesson. Uh, sorry I went a little fast, but you know, YouTube wants me to keep it under 10 minutes, so that's what I have to do. Always practice with a metronome. Always practice carefully, as slow as you need to. Have fun playing, and I will see you guys tomorrow.